Japan, land of the famous gangsters, the Yakuza. But in the 1970s, a newer, violent subculture was taking over the country, the biker gangs, or Bosozuku. Although they are fewer in numbers today, the legacy of the biker gang still leaves many in fear whenever they hear the sound of those familiar engines. They ride through the streets wielding baseball bats, sticks, swords, and even Molotov cocktails in a deadly game of cat and mouse with the law. As unique as they are dangerous, these gangs wouldn't just take on their rivals, they would take on the police themselves in an all-out war for supremacy. Let's dive right inside the life of Japan's most violent biker gangs. As the streets of 1990s Japan flood with residences and pleasure seekers alike, the peace is soon disturbed by the unmistakable sound of bike engines in the distance. Up to 100 motorcycles are being driven through the streets of Tokyo in a spectacle becoming all too familiar to those living in the cities. These are the Bosokozu, the biker gangs of Japan. And once again, they are out in full force. Not only do they ignore toll booths, they ignore the police as well. These are no petty criminals with a rap sheet including extortion, sexual assault, and even murder. Almost all of Japan's prefectures were forced to form special bodies to directly address the issues Bosozoku were creating. And at one point, an estimated 20 25% of criminal activity across the country was directly linked to biker gangs. The population of juvenile detention centers were made up of around 40% bosozoku, showing the true extent of the problem with a younger generation. Bosozoku have cemented their place in Japanese history with the likes of the Yakuza. The two criminal organizations do have links, with around a third of all Yakuza members coming from bosozoku, and most of the gangs paying a tribute to the Yakuza on a monthly basis helping keep the peace between the two. But the biker gangs of Japan would soon face the biggest challenges of their lives, and when a crackdown by police leaves the hunter becoming the hunted. But how did these kids from the streets turn into one of the most feared organizations since the Yakuza? The history of the Japanese biker gangs can be traced all the way back to World War II. The beginnings of these gangs can be linked to former kamikaze pilots, once revered in society but abandoned after the war. They had trouble adjusting back into civilian life. In their frustration, they turned to customizing cars, bikes, and engaging in criminal activity. Soon, they were riding around in groups, catching the attention of the police, who kept a watchful eye on this emerging culture. Japanese youth saw this lifestyle as appealing and took inspiration from the more famous American biker gangs of the time. These same same kids eventually took over after older members left and formed the identity of the Bosozoku we know today. By the 1970s, the gangs became a huge part of Japanese culture and were scrutinized by the authorities, eventually leading to violent clashes. The 
these clashes were not exclusive to other gangs. They had been known to fight pedestrians and police, leaving a trail of property damage and noise pollution on many of their rides. Gangs like the Black Emperors and Setting Sun became an all too familiar sight on the streets. Just getting into one of these gangs was difficult and often involved taking a severe beating from gang leaders. <laughs> The term bosozoku would not come into the mainstream until 1972, when the media reported on a fight between gangs in the city of Nagoya. One reporter combined the words boso, meaning reckless driving, and zoku, meaning tribe or family. It's believed the term was meant to suggest the involvement of the yakuza, and the term stuck from that day onwards. It is possible that this media attention was directly responsible for the rise of the bosozoku and the attraction to the youth of the time, who were becoming frustrated with the government system and way of life. They wanted an escape, and the biker gangs offered it to them. But life in these gangs was not always as appealing as it seemed. <laughs> Each separate gang was known by their clothing, their hairstyles, and their heavily customized bikes. Their clothing was known as tokofuku and often featured slogans and Japanese writing. Getting into a gang was a whole lot easier and less painful than trying to leave one. <laughs> Deserters were heavily beaten, sometimes even hospitalized in a warning to others. Like many criminal gangs around the world, the Bosozoku have a strict code. They believe in honor, loyalty, and courage, and follow a strict system of leadership. で、Despite the violent tendencies and encouragement to break the law at any opportunity, the biker gangs also had some pretty high morals, including making sure no harm came to the pedestrians they encountered on their rides. Other gang members, however, were not off limits, and fights between bikers were a common sight. <laughs> But the most violent actions were saved for their rivals. Their love for fighting and weaponry would be their eventual downfall. Public clashes were common, and even innocent bystanders were becoming caught up in the violence. Where the Bosozoku were once seen as rebellious, they were now seen as a very real threat to Japanese society, leaving the authorities with no choice but to take action. <laughs> Despite laws designed to stop the mass gathering of the disruptive bikers, the troublesome ways continued. <laughs> 
Instead of being a deterrent, the new laws attracted even more members, leading up to the golden age of the Bosozoku. A police report published in 1980 revealed an astonishing 750 different gangs, with a total of almost 40,000 members. In the same year alone, there were over 8,000 arrests of gang members, and a rise of over 80% on the previous year. What started out as a gathering was quickly becoming an army. The downfall of the Bosozoku can be attributed to two factors, one being the hard work of the Japanese authorities, one other defining factor, and perhaps the catalyst, was down to one simple failing, money. By the 1990s, the Japanese economy was in a perilous state, in what would become known as the lost decade. Times were hard, and those at the bottom end of society would suffer the most. Regular working class people, including the Bosozoku, could not afford the expensive customizations their bikes required. The younger generation, once attracted to the dangerous lifestyle, no longer saw the appeal, and the police crackdowns were becoming more frequent as they tried to eradicate the gangs altogether. In 2004, the government stepped up their efforts and relentlessly pursued the bikers, using every tool at their disposal. <laughs> Members could now be arrested on the spot, and with their persistence came results. As in the last two decades, the campaign to bring an end to Bosozoku had become something of a success. Bosozoku still exists, but it's nowhere near as recognizable or dangerous. They still honor the traditional attire, but today's members wear helmets, something the older generation openly mock. And others have even taken to riding scooters instead of more powerful bikes. As members leave, they find few youngsters to take over, and older members have even been known to rejoin their old gangs to help make up the numbers. The legacy of the bikers' gang still lives on today, with tales of the glory days from retired members, and even Bosozoku-inspired fashion featuring in the window displays of Japan's most fashionable clothing stores. The Bosozoku may not be clashing in the street or riding through cities showing off their bikes and their weapons, but they still hold a place in Japanese history with the likes of the infamous Yakuza. Share your thoughts on the violent biker gangs of Japan in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more from the sinister world of organized crime.